threats are coming. And look at how fast this first engineering bay is for Gumiho. That's about as fast as an engineering bay as I've ever seen in this matchup. So Gumiho might be gunning for a pretty quick plus one timing here in game number one, or maybe even one one with just one engineering bay. There's a couple of different ways this could play out. Solar over the course of this GSL and ZVT has been playing a relatively low drone count in the mid game to deal with early game aggression. And I'm wondering if that might come back to bite him at some point in this series as the sim comes through. Plus one infantry weapons not quite yet completed. So Gumiho instead just buying some time. But I think there is some strategy that Gumiho could play with with a fast 3cc like this, knowing that Solar is a Zerg that's more likely to cut drones around 60, maybe the mid 60s at most, because I think Gumiho moving in with this mindset knows that He's basically stopping the economic machine that is Solar. And Solar, he might be able to get a good surround with these links. Oh, this is pretty ballsy by Gumio. Does this actually math out? He's going to be able to trade a good number of these Marines and then lift up and go into the main base. So, so. Th that was really cost efficient. I think a lot of other players would have scooped up a little bit earlier on. Mm. But he is going to be able to get both these medevacs out. Yeah, and I think more importantly than the trade that happened on the ground there is that Gumiho, just by having his presence on the map against a player that is so focused on defense as Solar because he's so resilient. He doesn't want to get knocked out in the mid game. He wants to get to that late game safely if he can. We survive that as Gumiho now going to start levying some pressure. Over here at the nine o'clock base, there's a lot of defense ready for Solar, but these siege tanks on the high ground, is Solar gonna commit? Yes, he will. These one one links coming in, get a nice surround on both the siege tanks and although the siege tanks go down, it's not a very bad trade there for Gumiho, especially if he can lift up these Marines and escape to safely. Although whenever I see a couple tanks taken out like that, I'm always a little bit more worried about the push later on. Right. It seems like a lot of times those tanks are the backbone that allow you to launch attacks over and over. Actually, when we had that drop, the camera shot was a little bit misleading. I just saw the Marines, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until they scrolled down I went, oh, he's actually trying to hold this position. Yeah, I was right there with you. But you know, for Gumiho, I actually don't think that we have another follow-up push coming anytime soon. He went for a really fast fourth command center behind this. And so I think mostly this aggression that he is Putting on the map against Solar is just to kind of keep the creep spread in check, try to keep the Zerg economy about as slow as it can be in terms of building up. It's only just now that Solar is going to reach 90 drones, whereas you know if he was able to happily macro back at home, he would have gotten there maybe 30 seconds faster than this point. So Gumiho just trying to keep the pressure on and catch any damage that he can because of it. But it does feel like he's really starting to gun for the late game. He has two more factories in production back at home, so that's when he's going to start mixing in potentially Widow Mines, add in a second factory for Siege Tank production, and even a fifth command center coming underway. So Gumiho seems like he's absolutely priming to get set up for the late game. And on Solar's side of things, he's also taking up reasonably well himself. He's not gunning for any kind of timing attack here on Gumiho's side of the map as those Marines able to catch a ton of links. I feel like if Gumiho's on three bases, it's almost impossible. And by the way, just to note, it is not two factory siege tank and one factory widow mine. Gumiho's actually just fully pumping siege tanks right now out of three tech lab factories. So that siege tank count is going to be ballooning very quickly. Ghost production hasn't started yet. Is Gumiho's mostly focusing on getting those siege tanks out and also getting his upgrades? I mean, he's getting plus two vehicle weapons this early in the game. So he's clearly gunning to try and play a more late game. TBZ, and he's not yet at the stage where he wants to start spinning that gas on Ghost, but with his fourth base coming in, fifth base, excuse me, seems like it will get thwarted for now by Solar, and with part of the architecture on this map, actually Solar moving all the way up here into the fourth base, I was not expecting yeah, this move. He, he's got to spend that supply because he's got so many banes. You, know, you, you can't really sit on banelings for too long, right? because you eventually need to, to use them up to make more banelings and attack and again, so we have 50 more Zerglings being made. Um, I would imagine the Lurkers that are going to be out here are just going to be used to defend. So this has been a very different game from everything else we've seen today. This is Solar uh, quietly paving the map with creep, expanding everywhere, with very little recourse from the Terran, because I think we saw a couple of fumbled attacks early on. And now we're at the economic phase where Solar is burning through his funds to sacrifice Banes and Lings into these tanks and the rest of the position for Terran so that he can then take the rest of the minerals, rinse and repeat, and do it again and again. And, um, 
you know, it was you know years ago, but I feel like Maro, Maro, excuse me, was the first player to really figure out that what you want to do in this moment is stop attacking and just try to get your half of the map and play an exhaust game. I don't know if Gumiho is going to do that. I don't feel like Gumiho is the guy you think of as players who do that. But for now, Solar is just slamming Gumiho over and over and over here. And you can see that this position is really weakening. Yeah, Kumiho has just not been able to get this fifth command center up. And in fact, it was an orbital that landed there for a moment. So yeah, that, that's actually a, an indicator of how desperate he is. Normally, you want to build a planetary or something like that over there. He's going to bring the orbital back down. So that's going to be a hard position to defend. And by the way, just thinking back to the mid game and how active Gumiho was on the map for those moments, he was able to keep the creep spread in check for a good portion of this game. And Solar since then has been so on top of his creep spread. It's basically reached both the third and the fourth phase here of Gumiho, which is just insane. That Blinding Cloud so clutch. Get Sea Shanks and the Ghost. Everything has to kite back, and that means these Bailings can get better connections, as well as that Sea Shank getting taken down. But these trades, besides that, they have been relatively cost efficient here for Gumiho. His Sea Shank count is absolutely massive. The Vipers oh. haven't really been able to get too many abducts. Nice. Gumiho, does he actually spot this in the main? I don't know if he sees this. Oh, I don't think he has any idea. Oh, God. All right, so this is going to be oh no, a big hit from inside out. He's going to try to siege up, yeah, but I think if he gets queens out, he can transfuse that. Actually, uh, four lurkers that come out. Well, so. This is just a weird interaction because like he was damaging it, and then he wasn't. But instead, it'll allow for another attack in over here. I think that probably Solar made the right call just stitching that once it was spotted. You know, this is one of the things about Nidus uh, networks. We actually saw it more and more the longer the game's out, but you can just like make one in their main and they have to freak out and run back and kill it, even if you're not going to use it. And so it just softens that position again. Yeah, it's a great multi-prong attack tactic. And um, So he lifted his uh, CC what? from the natural. So that's it. That, that should show you how bad this has gotten for Gumiho. Now, Gumiho's not dead until he's been, you know, completely wiped out and doesn't have resources, but this is getting more and more... Uh, complicated as far as how he can find an out. And I feel like Gumiho is changing direction now with the way this one is going. That orbital command, it's floating back towards the natural expansion. I'm thinking he's probably going to try and take the fifth base over there at the 3 o'clock position. Because with a high ground here, I mean, there's no army really to assist this, but this is one of the more defendable positions that you have in the Terran base for this high ground third expansion. But of course, you do need to use units to properly defend it, so... And you can see, by the way, not only was that command center destroyed, but not that much was killed by uh, uh, for the Zerg. Right. It was a very cost-efficient trade there for Solar, and it was one that he desperately needed, too, because economically, oh, he's not in the best situation right now. He's still sitting at 83 drones, but these trades have been so cost-inefficient for him as we have another skirmish here in the middle of the map, and Fester trying to get in range to actually fungle the bio. So this is actually a two-base Terran. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, you're right. It actually, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if there's a command center that's not mining, but like, okay, GG, that's it. The, uh, add on from the factory. Ooh. He's getting Widow Mines actually pretty early, so maybe he wants to set up for a, a push over here. Widow Mines with an armory, too. So they're yeah. not going to have, Solar's going to need detection to actually dispatch them. He's just now starting the lair. This is a, this is an unusual timing push, but this is the potential to, Delay mining quite a bit. Gumiho might even be able to get two shots off with each of these Cloak Widow Mines. I don't know why I forgot what the, <laughs> the name of the unit was <laughs> for a moment there. <laughs> and also on Alcyone, one of the nice features of this map is Gumiho actually in the middle. Oh, oh my goodness, is he going to get okay, it? He wow. gets it. That was going to be. That was do or die right there. That's a scary situation, man. Imagine that Widow Mine actually burrows and kills all of those drones. Well, I'm getting a real appreciation for the very center of this map and how you can kind of wedge stuff in those narrow areas. And it's, it's hard to actually get in there and surround it. It's a very powerful position, and I feel like on this map it works in the favor of Terrans and Protoss players much more than Zerg. And also, by the way, working in that armory means that we can have a two Hellbat drop. Yeah, when is the last time we ever casted this? It feels like it's been a minute. Yeah. And I like this tactically for Gumiho. He's setting up to try and cancel the fourth hatchery with a marine drop on the right side. Meanwhile, pressuring here in the natural expansion. It does get parried I guess for now. If you do a, a, a Hellbat drop, you really have to commit a lot of links to deal with it. Another really good attack in. He's going to get about three drones. Gumiho's playing a pretty good early game, I got to say. I like this a lot. And keep in mind, he's doing this behind a 3cc opening. As, ooh, the, <laughs> I am not going to sing the praises of that one. but yeah. So... 
I mean, it, it's been some pretty cool ideas from Gumiho. It doesn't seem like it's curbing Solar that much in his progress. Another connection with these Banes. Got to be careful not to lose too much to that. Only a handful of Marines going down that time, luckily. So this fourth command center is going to be moved out. And I think he's going to go to... Oh, he's, I thought he was going to go to 6 o'clock. He's going to go to 9 o'clock with this. I was also expecting him to go for 6, but I guess if you don't take the 6 o'clock base, the avenues of attack that Zerg has are very limited because of the yeah. mineral wall by that third. It's a bit of a better mix with Drilling Claws, Widow Mines, and also Halbats to try to absorb some of the damage coming in from the Lings. Solar's now going to be setting his eyes here on this fourth base. Okay, not bad. A little attack in the main here. Going to draw some of this back. We do have a larger wave on the map here of Gumiho at the very bottom. Yeah, there it is. And he's been doing a pretty good job of kind of keeping uh, this medevac away where it's going to be hard to deal with. And so he's going to get the deny on the goal. That's basically the setup for that. On the opposite side of the map, Solar's continuing to grow in the top left. We don't have any uh, core end the game push coming from Terran yet, by the way. No, I think this is going to be more Maru style. Yeah. Two more, yeah, two more command centers immediately get thrown down. Ghost Academy as well. As Gumiho continues to pressure over here, and Solar does have the better bank, but if Gumiho is able to get up a solid enough defensive position back at home, I think it, it will still be hard for Solar to break, but. As you said, Gumiho, although he's been very active so far this game, he really hasn't done too much to slow down the economy of Zerg. Yes, he's getting repeated denies on the gold bases. He gets it once again there. So if you look at the uh, income at the bottom of the screen, Solar's is getting pretty scary. He's continuing to grow on the map. Yes, Gumiho is denying him a base here or there. But uh, at the same time, you know, we're getting to a position that could look like the last game. Remember the Hydras, the Lings, and the Banes from the... Uh, you know, uh, what we saw already, we could end up with a situation where he starts to try to flood whatever spot he finds to be the weakest. And the defensive setup for Gumiho, once we get these looks back at home, they aren't quite as solid as you would hope. There's no siege tanks here, so the is just going to connect with the planetary, and Lings and Hydra should be able to clean oh, that up. He oh, can the save repair it. is just enough. Yeah, that's actually pretty big. You really need to get that uh, command center. So... Solar, you know what, it's finally his turn. What, we're 12 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. It's finally his turn. And look at this. The the key unit counts. We have eight ghosts for Gumiho. I believe six siege tanks as well. So we're starting to get all these key units. And you have to wonder, with Solar's bank, is he going to get cost efficient enough trades? Now, the main link's coming in. Kind of into a choke. Marauder is absorbing a lot of the damage here. Blinding Clouds on one tank and the Planetary Fortress. But there's enough bio to be able to clean the rest of this up. And, you know, it was another position where there was a bit of a trade. But... The foothold that Terran had was never pushed away. As Zerg, you know, immediately at the snap of a finger, Max is back out again. 3.8k minerals, 2k gas. Uh, now, this is where we got to watch Gumiho carefully because his minerals are hitting around 100, which means he's, I mean, he's actually hitting the limit on what he can spend. So uh, even if the next few attacks are clumsy, if oh, Solar no. can continue to trade out, um, and re-max and trade out and break a position. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, man. This looks like a lot from the Zerg. Yeah, that's a lot of units. I feel like the Ghost Count and the Siege Tank Count just isn't enough to actually yeah. hold this. Gumiho is going to evacuate this base. I feel like there's just like not enough units on well, the just, ground there right There isn't now anything over here right now. So this base down here is going to go down. He's going to go right up. He, should he lift the command center or does he just going to go for it anyways? Okay, he decides to not do it. I was going to say, you could just blow up the orbital if you wanted. I'm surprised, though. Gumiho, before that attack, was sitting on about 80 army supply, but almost nothing is committed to defending this position over here in the bottom so, right. You know, it, he's... I, I'm having a harder time breaking this down because, yeah, he doesn't seem to have a lot, right? Um, but you look at the army supplies, and it's 93. Yeah, but... It just feels like he's not committing the units to exactly the right position. Yeah, he's not divvying them up right. So keep in mind, it's still tearing on four bases. Same as the last game, the Zerg's continuing to grow. Oh no, the Ghosts go for the long snipe right there, but actually overstay their welcome as the Banelings roll up and connect. Okay, so he's going to go for the SCVs now. Oh, okay. hey, that's a lot of damage right now. Solar Mind just completely broken this position. And he runs out again. Okay, so the supply disparity is getting further and further apart. And okay, that's it. Command center first. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. You need to do something 
radically different. I don't know if he's going to do that here. He could also throw a third command center down. Okay, never mind. He's going to throw the third CC down. So um, this isn't bad, but it does mean it's going to be one of these games where both sides are going to be not interacting a lot with each other, other than pokes and scouting, uh, and instead probably developing. And that makes me a little bit more worried here for Gumiho again. I'm right there with you. I I'm hoping that this third command center is the last one for a while. Mm -hmm. but this opening is looking relatively similar to what we saw in game number two. There's the fast armory with the widow mines, so it's going to be a cloaked widow mine drop coming through. I'm truly hoping that Gumiho starts to levy more pressure. Yeah. Well, look, you can do this three base power up and, and really try to take some fights. It's when you take a fourth base that you really um, give the Zerg uh, the, the kind of time that I think especially Solar is good with. Yeah, I so, feel like... This Sorry. Is, no, no, you're fine. Um, this is just, it's it's been such a different series from the first two series, right? Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay, so that's what we were looking for, the more barracks. So, you know, game one and game two, maybe a little bit too passive. On this map, I think a three base, just go for the kill, try to grind them down. Don't try to develop more. Instead, try to hinder them. Try to keep them even on bases with you. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, I think Gumiho with this build is going to try and max, max on army on three bases with 2-2. Two, two and try and get a timing done because that seems to be really where all things are heading. And so with the army right now, it's about, I believe, controlling the creep spread from the Zerg, trying to keep their economy mostly in check. That's that's enough. Okay, so now the push is starting. So this is maybe out of the entire series, at least for Gumiho's sake, the most important part in the whole series. He needs to make this push work. He needs to get some kills. He needs to, to make some ground because if he doesn't, he's probably gonna lose this game. He comes out, he finds some isolated queens. Solar actually saves him. That was wow. incredible. That transfuses immediately. Neither oh Bailey's getting some good connections right there. A lot of Marines went down. Solar's like a big trapdoor spider on the map. You just get a little bit further out and he pops out and ah, gets you. It's like he's playing Elder Scrolls, or not Elder Scrolls. He's playing like Elden Ring or Dark Souls right now and he finds a mimic chest well, of the well, queens. <laughs> and he tries to kill him and then they pop out. But he's gonna get them this time. That's a lot of queens going down there for Solar. And fighting off creep is kind of hard to do in this position. So we do have an infestation pit coming down. That means that fungal growth here for Solar is pretty far off. And I think that he's ideally looking to try and pair that up with the Hydralisks and just try and find some really big connections. We have seen that in the past from Zergs, especially in this GSL now that investors immediately pop with 75 energy. But so far, this pressure that Gumiho is getting done, this is all with 1-1 one, one against 1-1, one, one, by the way. 2-2 two, two is about to finish here for the Terran, and he's going to have a very very large window with an upgrade advantage to get something done. And right now he's at nine minutes, almost maxed. Those few Zerglings that counterattacked, that got a little bit of damage on the SCVs. It also kept the reinforcements back. I think he thought there were more Zerglings out there. So with the attacks that are coming again, you know, the problem is there are no um, tanks to basically shell the Banelings. Yeah, so no. once you want to get back, I mean, there's a Widow Mine, but you know, that's not comparable to having several tanks. Uh, that are out here that can shell this and, and whittle Ooh. this down over time. And bailing connections, again, very big, both on the top and the bottom sides. So the army supply here for Gumiho starting to slow down a little bit, but the reinforcements finally coming through from that third base, and really upgrades starting to shine here for Gumiho. Solar's hanging on for dear life, 22 more links in production, morphing 10 more bailings, trying to buy time. Bailings come through, some nice splits there by Gumiho, pulling the Marines back. He's got some more banes that are going to hatch. He has to buy a little bit of time. You can see those banes, they just now hatch. So he can go for another dive here. Again, he, you know, there's not much more creep off this. It's basically grass right below it. So he, he, he can't chase him too far. And I think Gumio's taking advantage of that. But, uh, well, I only see, what, a few more Banes. Oh, he's just going to go for the dive. Yeah, Solar's just fully committing this one. Gumiho, I'm expecting the lift up right here and trying green That's it. No, no, no Solar does Solar breaks him. Oh, just think of the way the momentum has been shifting so far over the course of the series. In game one and game two, Gumiho opted to go for a late game style of TBZ with just a little bit of aggression early on. And Solar was able to, frankly, manhandle him. In, in game one, it was kind of close. Solar was low on money for quite a while and was really struggling to finally put a dent in the armor of Gumiho and eventually was able to make it happen. But in game number two, it felt like almost a rout despite Gumiho having a healthy army supply, just was frequently caught out of position, perhaps wasn't able to navigate his army composition quite as well as he would have hoped. Whereas Solar was just firing on all cylinders. It seems like every single game that he's playing in this series, 
And even today, he's just getting stronger and stronger. This guy has not lost a single map so far today. Oh, he that's right. Yeah, yeah. He 3 0 Dark in possibly under 20 minutes. And now he's up 3 0 against Gumiho. I mean, he is on fire. It's going to have to be a little bit of a change of pace here for Gumiho. And I'm liking how aggressive he's getting with these drops. This is a little bit more bold than we saw him go for. Although, even one of the, one of the medevacs not dropping any of the Marines. I do feel like there's a reason why this is an older approach. Mm. I think I think we've seen this song and dance before. Oop. He almost, <laughs> he almost <laughs> leaves that one Marine there. Another little subtlety uh, of maybe him being a little bit nervous. Um, there's a lot of lings being made, by the way. The Hydra Den is going to come down here. The, uh, Zerg's expanding towards the top left side of the minimap. Yeah, Solar now took it to fourth base. 1-1 one, one completed here for Gumiho. Solar just now completing plus one ground armor. Melee attack a little ways off. Solar actually confident enough to push off of creep. It's rare that you see mainlings chasing this far. Oh, so those Marines weren't even in the medevac. Yeah, what what just happened back there? That was a bizarre look. I think did he, he might have did messed he up the mini click. Like. Yeah, drop on the mini map or something, and then uh, I don't know. I can't explain yes. what I just saw there. Something didn't make sense. Mechanically, things just feel a little bit shaky for yeah, Gumiho. Yeah, things feel a little rocky right now. I think he might. No, I don't know that he can even uh, get a deny on this. Okay, he does. Nicely done, yeah, but well not done. without sacrifice. Loses a couple Marines. I think it's okay, though. Gumiho, although the mechanics haven't been quite as crisp in this game so far, it's not as if he's making any glaring errors, and even some of these trades have been quite cost-efficient for him. So coming now into this top left base, most of Solar's army has been kind of sequestered over the bottom right side of the map trying to defend that triangle third. So Gumiho, actually with his multi prong attack, getting a lot of damage done now. I like okay. this. He even gets the kill. No cancel. Okay. Lifts up the hold Marines. Hold up, hold these up. These are the plays that Gumiho has been needing. That was just, you know, the blink of an eye, but suddenly Gumiho did all the right moves there. That was exactly what we needed to see. Yeah, this is the TBZ play that we know Gumiho is capable of yes. coming into this finals. This is what we expected to see from him. Is even if he does play these styles, you know, Gumiho, he is a top player. He doesn't always need to rely on having unique and creative builds. Mechanically, he is very sad. It just felt like in game one, all the way through game number three, he wasn't really able to make it happen. But oh, just small errors like this one, like losing bunches of Marines and even the Hydras picking off Medivacs. I mean, it's really a matter of agility. These mm. moments, like, can you pick up, can you attack, and can you pick up and run back out? Uh, yeah. But look, he, he had two big wins. He killed two bases on different sides of the map. Solar is still very much a threat in this game, but curbing growth like that is going to make it tough for Solar later on. It's kind of a dangerous dance because just a couple of bailing connections can completely topple this army here for Terran. Okay, so he forces a cancel again. So, you know, Solar's in a, he's like, I, I want to be careful with how I say this. He's, he's not in a, he's not dead, but he needs more growth. And so when, with the way that Solar uh, handles his army, he needs to trade really well if he's going to trade. Yeah, Gumiho has been doing a really good job of denying additional bases here for Solar. Solar has been on a four base economy for the past couple of minutes. And generally speaking, Zerg wants to be ahead on bases. And Solar, even down at 77 drones, by the way, I didn't realize the drone count was quite so low. So things boating actually quite well for Gumiho. I got to say, even though there have been some hiccups, he's Looking much more solid here in this macro TBZ than the games we've seen from earlier. Throwing down four more command centers. Ghost of Academy now underway. Whereas Solar's economy is the most stunted it has been this entire series. Yeah, and I think Gumiho is being really patient. He's kind of like letting the clock run and saying, where are you going to go next? And then when uh, Solar says, I'm going here, Gumiho punishes. Yeah, it's smart play from Gumiho. And this is maybe the best patience game I've seen from Gumiho and it's only he's only able to do it because of that win we had um, maybe four or five minutes ago where he got the two bases killed off. Yeah, slowing down the macro tempo there for Zerg. Really paying a lot of dividends now is Solar finally able to start saturating the triangle third base which is his fifth expansion. Meanwhile Gumiho in the middle of the map continuing to try and cut off the creep strike. By the way Solar when I think of Zergs with really good creep spread Solar I don't think of him as being one of the top Zergs in terms of creep. It's always been good, but what we're seeing from him today in the finals has just been so exceptional. Yeah. He is absolutely on top of it. I mean, just think of how many tumors Gumiho has killed during this game, and still Solar 
is slowly working his way across the map. Now that planetary does get canceled. Kind of a funny attack there. Oh, oh. be careful. Those Bailey connections to be very dangerous. A nice pickup there by Gumiho. Able to evacuate out of that situation. Good split here with the Metavax as well. I think Zerk might be able to breach this down here. He's so far off creep, this is kind of crazy to see. Yeah, really, this bottom right, right quadrant of the map is the only location where Solar has been completely oh, oh. stunted in terms of... Oh, does of he see it? Creep spread. Does he see it? I'm not sure he does. Oh, okay, he does. Yes, he does. He's he finally does. getting he's pulled. He's going to kill it in time. The night well, is, actually, it's no, he's not going to kill it. Done. Yeah, it's just no, SCDs. It's going to spill out. He's got another attack over here in the front. And Gumiho is near max, so the reinforcements not all, but might not even be really be that much. But there's only a couple of links coming out of this Nidus, so kind of a false alarm there. Yeah, I think he realizes it's probably not safe to commit an army in there. It gets stuck in there if he kills it off. We're actually going to see some nukes coming out from Gumiho. Not really what I expected in this situation. But I suppose once you get that fifth base up, you really st can start to afford things such as this. But this is definitely, you know, the best late game we've seen here from Gumiho. Yeah, and it all comes back to him, him shutting down those bases and really slowing down the economy of Solar. And Solar once again going to try and push off Creep, but in these Marines, they can kite back. There's no focal growth. There's not really much to slow this away. So it's going to be a favorable trade here for Gumiho. Yeah, definitely a, a poor attack there. I you know, it's a little bit weird when the Zerg gets maxed out and, and they don't have anywhere to attack. It's super uncomfortable. Cloak saving those ghosts. Yeah, nicely done. Gumiho with really a minimal bank right now has to be very cost efficient. Has to be very careful about losing any key units such That's as right. those ghosts. Yeah, don't be misled by the fact the supplies are maxed out. Gumiho has 350 minerals in the bank. Uh, solar is was was at 2k a little bit ago. Yeah, and the gas is not going to be a bottleneck for solar for the foreseeable future here. Right. He's really breaking that out. Now a couple of queens here in the middle of the map are getting taken down. Will make it easier for Gumiho to control the creep spread from this moment forward. Siege tanks. I'm liking the arc that Gumiho has set up here. It but is. defensively, this is a much better game that we've seen from him earlier on in the series. Yeah, he's coming forward with these Banelings. Banelings hitting tanks right now. Yeah, these are not cost-efficient trades no. for Solar. I mean, thinking back to game number one, Solar barely was able to edge out Gumiho in terms of the cost efficiency because of his economy being so much greater. But was finally able to really stop Gumiho in his tracks with a couple of big Baneling attacks on planetary fortresses. But I don't think he's going to get the same chance here. And Gumiho has been able to safely establish a fifth base for longer than he has this entire series. Yeah, and we see him coming down now to try to fight this. I don't know that he can take this out. Banelings are morphing over in this area. Sir keeps inching in, but never having enough. Yeah, it's been a pretty good trade here for Gumiho yet again. And I got to say, I was kind of doubting Gumiho going for this macro TBZ once more after getting shut down both in game one and game two, but he's really starting to play very well now. I think we're uh, getting close to the end here. I think Gumiho is going to win which is crazy. Yeah, it is starting to feel that way. Solar simply cannot secure another base. Part what? of the architecture of this map is the next expansion for the Zerg it has to be in the most vulnerable position. These gold, half gold, half blue bases that are not in a corner. They're basically in the middle of the map, one in the top left, one in the bottom right. And that makes it really easy for Gumiho to move forward with the siege tank line behind and continually shut down the economic growth of the Zerg. But Fungal Growth there on the Medivax is a big pickup, actually, for Solar. Yeah, he, but he's he only can't able to get one. OK, so look, he's going to get this command center. Not bad. Um, but Terran has a, a lot of money to spend here. This may be a pretty quiet ending to this game as Zerg kind of fizzles out. And this is really the late game TBZ that we needed to see Gumiho play in game one and game two. And finally here in game number four with his tournament life on the line, he's able to bust it out. It's really impressive. I mean, he's, he's done a really good job playing this. He's played the map extremely well. He's really starting to get spread thin. And even these hatcheries getting killed and canceled repeatedly is kind of burning a hole in his wallet. Yeah, well, I mean, this is all Gumiho has to do. It's kind of a slow, quiet game. Oh, fumble on the ghosts! Okay, that's pretty big. Can he get those kills? Can he get those to connect? He does. It gets a lot of the medevacs as well. Unfortunately for Solar, although that was a fantastic move. He's just never going to get off this this area with these autumn-colored trees. Yeah. He just can't. Th th that position is too strong. He's going to try to come in again and break it. I think he can get the tank this time. 
Okay, not bad. Yeah, these trades are cost efficient here for Solar, but the, the problem is that now Gumiho's the player that's been able to establish the bang, so he's gonna be yeah. able to remax on Ghost. He has 18 siege tanks right now. Actually, Gumiho's army is 18 siege tanks and like 10 other units, which yeah. is kind of unbelievable. It's kind of a funny game. He's gonna send this one tank out. Uh, there is a big attack on the far left. I think we're gonna, yeah, here it is. Oh, I think it's the Solar's Hail Mary play, but well, I don't know if you he's know, gonna he's, be able to break this. He kills a lot of workers, he drives that away. Keep in mind, the Terran also does need to grow eventually. Well, actually, know. I guess he's got that position just south of here. He has been able to take the half gold base over here at the bottom right. But Solar with that win in the top left might actually be able to get a hatchery up. And if yeah. if Solar can get his mineral economy back online, there is there is a world. There is a world where he can come back in this game. Do not write him off just yet, because Gumiho right now, there have been a couple of very cost inefficient trades. There's a chance. He overextends. And he puts his Nidus right in plain sight. Oh, there's a tank here. That's so very he, smart. He can't get that to finish. Oh, there's so many tanks. Wait, oh what? Oh, my God. Oh, Wait wow. a minute. Were those stuck up there? Yeah, six siege tanks stuck. What? Happens to the he best of us. He really is nervous. He had a bunch of stuff stuck in his base. That was a massive fungal growth, by the way. Gets a ton of bio right there. But I do feel like Solar is still running out of steam. <laughs> so many this siege tanks. This is so Holy funny. Crap. Yeah, those got stuck in his main. That, so that's probably why it looked so funny. It seemed like he had a lot in supply, but I, and you were saying he had a bunch of tanks, and I'm thinking, I don't see that many tanks at all. Yeah, I just assumed he had like the most, the most conservative spread of siege tanks of all time. <laughs> yeah. Back at home, but, but no, Solar's going to see main. this and be like, is he switching into Beck now? Like, <laughs> he basically is, yeah. I mean, honestly, like the unseaged, the unseaged tanks can probably take this fight. Yeah. <laughs> if Gubio just A-moves it. Well, he's got Lurkers hitting his base up here. And there's something happening south of this position. Oh, Lurker's actually down there, too. Not interfering with the mining just that much. As Gumiho with the superior range on the siege tank should finally be able to dispatch those Lurkers, but what a grindy game. Solar, oh. I have to say, has been playing from really a tough losing position for the past, like, five, almost ten minutes. Oh, my God. He's, He's actually making a game of it. It's kind of remarkable. fight. Lurkers versus tanks. Lurkers versus unseaged tanks. I guess. I guess unseaged tanks just win this. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, have we seen this interaction? Um, I think we're. Cool. Well, this has been one of the strangest games I've ever casted. Yeah, it's a bizarre one. It's like super scrappy. Both sides actually don't have that much money. Twenty. Solar has tanks. more workers. He's gonna run out though, but he does have the gold base. So the minerals are gonna come in. And keep in mind that Solar has more gas. So, this isn't over. You know, this many tanks doesn't do that much if you don't have any kind of Marines, you don't have any kind of meat with them to protect them. It also does explain why, the supply-wise, the game looked bizarre, where Terran couldn't seem to get anything done. Yeah, there's a lot of Ghost and Hallians now entering the field, so there should be some support here for the Siege tanks, but, you know, the mineral economy has been so sparse for Solar. He only has 26 lings on the map. He's 11 Hydras. And I feel like once Gumiho really entrenches this position, all right, Solar coming in, his last attack, that is so many Siege Tanks. He's got some blinding clouds coming down, but I don't, yeah, it's going to be a GG. Gumiho takes game one. Oh, There's going to turn be... those into Hellbats? Yeah, he is. Yeah, we are. When is the last time we saw the Hellbat morph into Slow Walk into the Thrones run away and don't get killed moment? Well, we've got it back over here now. We got a little bit of a taste of it, I think, game number two with the two Hellbat drop. But... <laughs> yeah. Able to deny a little bit of mining. I think he's trying to find an opening. So he's trying to do just what we were talking about. He wants to go for the fourth base. Oh, oh run! Solar's just been so good at this queen movement pretty much all series. So that more of a push is coming down. So this is such an important moment in this game. We need to see progress here as he's going to try to mount pressure onto the fourth base. Yeah, more barracks now coming in for Gamijo. So it is going to be a more pressure build. And... So much of Terran versus Zerg leads up to a moment that's going to be happening here where either Terran can take control of the game and the Zerg starts to struggle and try to fight back like we had in the last game, or it's going to be like the first three games where Zerg basically gets to balloon out on the map, um, pave the map with creep, and start to corner the Terran. So there is a fourth command center now coming down from Gumiho, and I want to note for a fact that in the first time this series, Solar has a pretty substantial upgrade lead. He went for a very fast double evolution chamber play. His 2-2 two -two is about a third of the way done, and infantry level one is just going to be completing 
for Gumiho. So, Solver, should he start to go for some more max pressure after he's able to just kind of handle all of this aggression on his side of the map as he balloons his economy, as you said? He can start to get some real damage done with 3-3. Three, three. He's even starting his high tech in time to kind of coincide with the upgrades of 2-2 two, two completing. So, Solar really setting up for a strong late game aggression play. Okay, so he, he denies that base. He's going to now try to move in here. Now, Solar was willing to give up that northern base, but it's going to be this one over here in the middle of the map that Solar completely wipes his attack out. Isolates all that, kills it. Now, what we have these two drop ships flying around. They're not going to get much done. So, Terran on three base, Zerg on four. Gumiho running a little and bit low on steam. The low medevac count kind of coming to bite him there. And I think that that, that losing the, 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 the fifth base up there at the top, is it's still worse for Gumiho because he lost most of his army down there. But uh, the, the uh, supplies are going to keep ramping up. We've got those additional three racks coming down along with the fourth base here at the center right at 3 o'clock. One thing that I am concerned for Gumiho is, is not him taking this fourth base and defending it successfully, although that might be a risk because of Solar's upgrade advantage. In this situation, actually, the planetary not even morphing right now, whoa, whoa, so Solar's going to move across the map. Actually, really catching Gumiho out of position. I don't know if he's anticipating this. Solar perhaps not realizing how out of position Gumiho is, in fact, is. He's going to try to retreat back home to defend. Nice melee connections to start things off here. A lot of those Marines getting taken down, but Gumiho, he's going into the third base. Looking to find some damage. Solar on the retreat. Now it's him that's getting caught out of position here. 14 drones, in fact, going down. Yeah, he loses quite a bit of workers, but the rest is cleaned up. And, you know, that fourth base for Terran has been landed. So it's four base versus four base. We all know Zerg always have to be one to two or more bases ahead for them to be in a healthy state. They can't stay even with the Terran. And, uh, and we are getting to that point where they're both maxed out. The Zerg is getting ahead in minerals and gas now. And in fact, he's going to try to come in here at this third, hoping there's going to be, um, you know, uh, an overcompensation in the south. And it looks like he's right. There's really not a lot to defend other than these tanks in the distance. And that planetary not even done morphing, so. And he's got another s small little strike force down here at the bottom. Yeah, attack commencing again in the third base here for Solar. He's able to pull Gumiho a little bit out of position, but. It's kind of a nice thing, actually, that the, the planetary hadn't finished morphing, because if it had, it wouldn't be able to lift off against those Banelings. Instead, oh, no, oh, Gumiho, misclick, misclick. nice catch. Yeah, the pathing here on Solaris can be really tricky at times. There are a lot of different routes units want, might want to go. And Solar does not want to let this fifth base get up, get up so he's going to he try and aggress out. again. So he's going to just try to slam the spot. He grabs the tank, pulls it over, gets the kill. Yeah, being able now, to yoink another he, siege tank. He doesn't kill the command center, at least from the camera shot we saw. And yeah, the command center is still alive. I think it might be burning down, in fact. So hopefully Gumiho is repairing that back at home as he's microing his Marines in the top left side. So we're finally able to secure that fifth base on his side of the map. Dynas Network once again coming in. Infestor is getting mixed into the Zerg army as well. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh. Big catch. Wow, it's, it's been a... It's been a slugfest of a game. He gets those two kills, yeah. and he's going to beeline it right up here. Both players taking a lot of blows. Gumiho repositioning his heat take. So he's going to tear down these rocks in the middle of the map. He wants to create an area where he can continue to circulate into different positions. Oh, that investor gets sniped. That's a nice win there for Gumiho. And I got to say, you know, um, well, hold on. Let's see how this attack goes. Uh, there's going to be another big move in here now. And Marines and Siege Tanks here on the high ground, but the Blinding Cloud is fantastic. Able to disable two of those Siege Tanks. Marines coming in to reinforce, but that Command Center is going to lift up. A lot of SCVs getting taken out, but there aren't any Banelings left, so Gumiho going to take a quite favorable trade here against the Marines, or the, not the Marines, the Zerglings, and the so, Hydralis is the retreat away, but the supplies once again in favor of Solar Man. He's been mining so much more over the past couple of yeah, minutes. He's the, able to re-max. Game, games one through three are being recreated here in game five. But I do think Gumiho is buttoned up a little bit tighter than than those games. But he's got to be careful. The next couple moves are going to be uh, very important to watch. And you know, we're, you know, Gumiho, he has a lot of isolated tanks that are really thrown out in the front. And so, so, you know, Solar runs out there and kills that and runs away. And if enough of those tanks die, the whole position becomes kind of unstable here. Solar's so active with these Nidus Canals. And I love the play too, just having a couple of lurkers in them, because if those lurkers get out onto the map, 
it's such a thorn in the side of the Terra player. It's so hard to actually effectively deal with them. So it's paramount that Gumiho is able to get rid of those Nidus networks before they're able to pop. So they're actually going for a defensive one over here. Okay. Another push in. Oh, the fungal growth is oh, massive. He, ca he catches the metabacks. Yeah, with a parasitic They're shot too. down. They're Almost shot. every single one goes. Oh, that's crazy. And now he's going to come up. Can he actually get the planetary? Oh, he can get that and more. Yeah, SCD is not able to repair, repair the planetary expansion. So, so we always got to watch the money. It, it, it's a max out Zerg again. He's getting more and more in the bank. The Terran's struggling to um, you know, get enough in his pockets where he can refill and remax out. So Gumio has to try to survive, and if he doesn't, there's no way he can recover the bases. He's already lost one. There's two more uh, that are very tempting. Those stray tanks are gonna be targeted now. Yeah, there just isn't Marines. The flight to, to safety them. is gonna happen here. He pulls back a little bit further. Now, it's like all hands on deck here. Gumiho is going back. He's trying to do everything to just, to just reclaim the bottom right. By the way, we're not showing it on camera. South of this, the Zerg's expanded as well. Yeah, Solar has completely consumed the left side of the map. That includes the bases at the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position. So even should Gumiho be able to defend for the next couple of minutes and force an endgame scenario, Solar is going to have mine from the shared bases at the top and the bottom. And Solar, he's not done yet, comes in, is able to abduct all of the Liberators. Siege Tank's also getting blasted here as he's going to continue to push forward. Bailing's even connecting on some of the Marines, so overall a relatively cost-efficient trade there for Solar. And once again, stray Siege Tanks there at the middle of the map. Gumiho, he's down to 150 supply. I don't think he has the economy to remax at pace with Solar. And there's this big, glaring, weak spot here at the bottom right. Yeah, Solar is being able to find value all over the map right now, and those Vipers are going to turn with near max hit points. And once again, this position for Gumiho, only a handful of Siege Tanks and Liberators. And oh man, even this counterattack here, in between the natural and the third base gets so many siege tanks, even some reinforcing ghosts. And this is going to lead to an opening, I think, at the bottom right side of the map, should Solar decide to fixate his attention over there. Yeah, this is a great move here by Solar. It's kind of a generic position, but it's a position nonetheless. And then that means that this is, he's going to start to, to mess up infrastructure over oh, here. Oh, wow. This isolates the Terran from the main base. He's got to run back up here. A factory goes down. I didn't. I've, I think we've seen two factories killed so far. Yeah, a lot of the and production is getting taken down by Gumiho. He kills another tank up here. Yeah, and now Gumiho is finally able to clean this up. But look at Solar there immediately go. pounces in the bottom right position. The ducks on the Liberators able to save them, disable them immediately. Oh Links and Bailings coming oh, in, but he Solar. Actually, okay, he says maybe not. Yeah, I love safe it. than sorry. Yeah, I, I actually respect it. He's playing very patiently. He knows he knows he doesn't have just enough Bailings to kill that planetary fortress. And for Solar, this is kind of a careful situation because he doesn't have much of a bank. But oh my goodness, I didn't even catch. No, I didn't even the see that. The Broodlord transition coming in. There are seven Broods now on the map. So this is the problem for Terran, is he only has one place to, to defend left, and it's in the bottom right. Although I guess there's a fresh base here, but that's just something in the way, right? Uh, Terran can't counterattack in these moments because if they counterattack, the Zerg just gives up as many bases as he wants to kill the one thing Terran has. There are no ghosts on the field to snipe these Broodlords. The only anti-air right now is these Marines. The Viper is very high in energy. I don't know if Gumiho's going to be able to stop this oh push. The Lynx and Bailey's coming in the bottom right. The Planetary is getting taken out. Gumiho now on four bases, and Solar is so close to his first GSL championship. Yeah, I think that Gumiho doesn't have much left. He's going to try to counterattack, but does it matter when Solar has this much of the map? Solar even filling in into the bottom position here. Yep. There's literally almost no income right now for Terran. Terran's going to try to fight back, but Solar can trade out for days and days. That Ghost finally entering the field, and with some Marine support, able to take down the majority of the Broodlords, but is it going to be enough? Going home on 115 supply, Lings and Banelings coming in. Those are some high energy Infestors and Vipers. And now the Natural's getting ransacked by the Zerg. I think this is it. I think we're just seeing Gumiho digest the loss, process what's happened. He got this far in a GSL, but I don't think there's any way he can even stay in the game for this much longer. Everything is falling apart. Now the final moment's coming in. The Bailing's connecting here. That's Blinding it. Landing Cloud GG. GG is called. Solar is your GSL Season 3 champion. Wow.